Hello and welcome, I'm Arumba. Thank you for joining me. We have a brand new patch for CK2. Let's go over the changes. So, we're now on patch version 1.11, or 1.11. All save games should be fully save game compatible. There's no changes to any of the provinces in the game, so you should be able to keep playing on, on whatever campaign you've been working on. Some very exciting changes that are going to make the game a lot easier to manage. Most notably, we have um, an auto-invite function to plots. I tried around, I played around with this a little bit. It's very convenient in small realms. The larger the realm gets, you're probably going to want to, I don't know, avoid doing it because it invites everyone. And if you have a ton of people available, you might have to click through 20, 30, 50 different dialogues because every time you click the button, everyone gets invited. But it, it's a very good feature. It's better than having to do it manually. An auto stop plot functionality is very useful because then they just automatically, if, as soon as your spy master uncovers anything, he just tells them to stop doing it, which is nice. The siege leader trait is fantastic. This will help out with making sieges happen faster. Bastard dynasties are now generated when the first bastard is born, so you can have bastard sub, sub dynasties. Holy orders can now use their special units in a defensive war where they are the primary defender. So you can't just attack, as a Christian, you can't just attack a holy order and have them be completely weak against you because you're a Christian or a Catholic. Um, they'll have their own army just like normal if they're the primary defender. Some sort of a crash to desktop was fixed during uh, the 1184 to 1185 years, so that was gotten rid of. Duke David II of Gwened is an invalid state in the history files, so that's been fixed. Slow down fleet movement and increase movement time from armies onto or off of fleets. This is basically a nerf specifically for the raiding that happens in the beginning if you're playing with the, um, the Old Gods DLC. The issue is that the pagans are coming, they come in and, and they leave faster than you can even react. There's just nothing you can do about it because fleets move faster than, like you could, there were times where you could, you could fight in one province or one county and then get onto some boats and get to the next county faster by sea than the enemy would get by walking. And that doesn't make any sense. How could you get onto boats and then travel faster than just walking one county over? So this is a good change. It's not it's not huge, but it's enough to make it so that pagans aren't as abusive with their rating. Favorite IP table to multiplayer just makes it so you can have multiple people that you play with without, without having to constantly tab in and out and keep it off saved off game. You can just keep it saved in the game. An approve button for laws so you can change your mind later if you initially ignored it. This didn't really come up too often but sometimes you would end up in a situation like maybe playing in the Holy Roman Empire where a law would end up being permanently stuck on temporary because you couldn't you know they couldn't get enough support but you had already voted no and maybe you were the last piece of the puzzle. Well now you can change your mind. And then also if you just change your mind it, it's nice that you can actually Revote for that same law. You can now see which characters have a plot proposal sent to them. So this allows you to take a quick look at the interface or the intrigue screen and see if there are new backers that you could invite. All you have to do is click the auto invite to plot button once to turn it off and then click it again to turn it back on and then it will resend invitations to all the new people. You're now able to select ships exclusively by using the alt key. It used to be that if you made a big box over everything, you did something like this over the map, it would only select armies if there was this, it was it would prioritize armies over anything else. In order to select ships like that, you'd have to pick out a ship, hold the shift key, and then grab everything, and then you could select multiple ships at once. Now, you don't have to do that nonsense. You can just hold down the alt key and select all your ships. Pretty convenient. As far as modding goes, it's now possible to read additional data into existing landed titles in the mods. It's possible to read additional data into existing religions and mods. Added the intermarry parameter to religions, so you can specify if members tend to marry those of specific other religions. Pretty nice. The, things like this make the game... The, ma the modding community is tremendous in CK2, so this is good. Exported extra number of children for players to defines. Fixed custom tooltip trigger and effect always returning true. Not really sure what that means, but I'm sure it's a good fix. Exported army load unload move cost to defines. So if you want to make a mod, you can basically modify uh, this here. The increased movement time from armies onto or off of fleets is the army load unload move cost. That's how like how expensive it is as a movement trigger. So 
Pretty minor as far as patch notes go, but a lot of utility. It's going to make the game much more user-friendly, and I think it's a great move in the right direction. Um, also being released with this patch are is a, a little bit of DLC. You're able to purchase the EU4 save game converter. So now, if you want, you can take your CK2 save game and convert it into a mod for EU4, which will allow you to play as any country um, in your save as EU4. A couple things to know though, um, you don't have to play CK2 to the end, you can convert it at any time. You can even take the very beginning state status of CK2 and just convert it directly. But because it's a mod, it's technically a mod, you won't be able to get achievements unlocked by playing your save game in EU4. You'll have to play the base game. So thanks so much for watching, I'll look forward to seeing everybody in the next video. I'll see you again soon.